Good morning, folks. Today, or this week, has been the first week where we're allowed back in our friends and family's homes. Today's DIY friends call out is tiling. I've got to find my tiling stuff, which I brought down here somewhere. Sure, it's down there. Come on, chickens, out of the way. That looks like tiling stuff. Laser. Laser measure. All right, I think we're back on schedule. I'm back on the road. It's a bit of a DIY road trip. Finally, we can help out friends and family again with some projects. first job was to basically lay out the whole wall. It's a small area, but it's a bit of a fiddly one. There's lots to consider with sockets, cabinets, and other bits and bobs. So the first thing to do, I backed out all of those sockets. We're gonna tuck in the tile behind the sockets. Fortunately, most of the screws were long enough so we can just reuse those and re-secure those socket covers after we're done. Jess and James had already picked up all the materials so everything was waiting there for us we've gone with a just a standard ready mixed grout and adhesive in a tub it's nice and straightforward to use about a day to dry before you can grout we are going to be using a, a separate grout for it uh, but this is meant to be one of those all-in-one solutions and uh, apart from that it's a pretty straightforward job apart from those sockets so you can see the sockets we've backed them out uh, and then we'll be using the screws and if they're not long enough we'll get some longer ones and uh, tighten the sockets back into the tiles. It's a neater way to do it and it just leaves a better finish. It does mean that there's a lot of fiddly cuts to do but that's just the nature of little tiling jobs like this. Most of the time Jo was off camera to one side with the tile cutter. She was doing all those but where there was L shapes and fiddly bits to cut I just used a small grinder. That was easy enough just to make sure that we had tile behind the socket all the way around so our sockets would sit nice and even across the whole uh, whole size of the socket. Quite often there's a little bit just to nip out after you've used a grinder so I could do that with those uh, tile nibbly bits and uh, get those done and then we took it up to the bottom of the cabinet and there's going to be uh, some sealant along the bottom and then we'll have a little trim at the top here so it, it finished it all off pretty nicely. Right, as you saw, we did all right at the weekend. We did a Saturday afternoon family project where the kids all went off and played somewhere upstairs or outside when the four of us got on and did most of the tiling. It's funny, isn't it? Like a small area, but equally tricky with all these sockets to pull out and cut around and forgetting it all, having to drive back and get it. But anyway, we got the majority of it done, but not quite all of it. So today I popped back to get the last few tiles, there's only a few, just up in this top corner, done. I did them as soon as I got here. Gave them a couple of hours, which was just about long enough that I could get all the grouting started that end and work along and hopefully get everything sealed and be done by the end of the day. But it's been a good transformation. Nice and simple, straightforward metro tiles. We've gone with a two mil grout spacing and they've gone for white. I think it is white. Just drives a bit lighter a white grout. It's funny, I think our kids and our pets must have got used to me talking to myself and the camera over the years because their dog is looking very confused over there. Yep, she definitely thinks I'm crazy. Probably rightly so. I 
this video will come out before the other one, but I've also been giving my brother and his wife a hand getting some wardrobes done in their bedroom, and it was a few days before uh, their little girl arrived, so it was a time-sensitive project, but it was fairly straightforward. Well, I say straightforward, it was a, a double header two nights in a row with a 1 a.m. finish, but we got it done. So I'll be sharing that shortly on the channel as well. Uh, plus we've got a few other projects lined up over the summer months. Some uh, landscaping type projects, a gazebo, um, outdoor kitchen, a few other bits at our place as well. So it's gonna be a busy few months, I think. Now, I'm no expert when it comes to tiling. In fact, I'm not much of an expert at anything, but I'll give you a bit of a lowdown in the process I've used, mainly uh, to starting off with. That's the key bit with the tiles. I've got this batten, which you probably can't see behind the oven. We pulled the oven out, put that batten in, level with where we want. They haven't got an upstand here. Um, so if you've got an upstand, providing that's level, you can work from that. But you just want to make sure that you're starting off on something that's level. So we use the laser to put a level across here as well. And it, it was pretty bang on actually, oak to oak and the batten in between. So we've worked from there as our datum and then come off. And I put a spacer underneath the bottom tiles and that's where in a minute, once we've finished up tidied, we'll put our sealant in that gap and all the way along and tool it off nicely and cleanly. And another thing you wanna keep an eye on is measure up, work out where your tiles are gonna finish because it's no good ending with like a 10 mil slither at the top. Um, so you really need to work out uh, the best way of laying the tile. Every single room, job, project, area is gonna be completely different. So starting off with a whole tile at the bottom is not always the best way. When I've done the bathrooms and showers at our place, I've actually started off put it, putting a batten in about half a tile or thereabouts up from the bath or whatever we're, we're working down to then you tile up and then at the end, then you can come in and fit those tiles. That way, if you've got any undulation in the bath or the worktop or whatever it is, or the floor, then you can scribe those tiles to the bottom. And it means that you've then got a sensible amount of space, uh, a sensible size of tile, bottom and top. Um, same on the width, we've measured it out and we ended up centering our first tile. We've ended up with about 50 mil, maybe a quarter of a tile um, up each end, which is just about okay. So we then alternate it up that way. So once I'd finished off uh, sponging down the ground, there will be a little bit more haze and stuff to wipe off in days to come, but I then was able to do any sealing needed and I could then tool all that off to make it nice and neat. The sockets, uh, they need to still be straightened up and screwed back in, but we'll wait until those last tiles are done. Uh, but apart from that, the whole thing is pretty much done. There's a little bit of trim underneath the cabinet, which is probably worth doing in the, just a little scotia or something to cover that cut edge. But it's all complete, and Jess has just sent over a few little clips so you can see it all finished, all tidied up, and uh, all my mess gone. So there we go. Pretty simple project. Nice to be seeing people in the flesh and getting stuck into a few projects hopefully there's a few more of these to come over the next few weeks and months but there we go i'll try and leave a couple of videos at the end of this one which you can head over and watch maybe tiling ones if i can dig them out otherwise thank you for watching remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time mm -hmm.